the formidable robot. You ever tired Crystal Pepsi, or hell, Pepsi Blue? If you have, then you know what tasted like. Okay, now think about a combo of those two. You seeing it? Okay, now throw alcohol in it. Wait what? Alcohol? You trying to tell me that there was gonna be a beer version of Pepsi? Well yes, kind of. And before you ask, it's not the whole, they put freaking beer in Pepsi, thing. I lived around where one of those Pepsi factories are. The place is only for shipping drinks by PepsiCo in our state, like Pepsi, Mountain Dew, etc. And if you're wondering, yes, that means that we have those Pepsi shipping trucks running around here too. I've been told of this urban myth around my local area, and it has to do with a Pepsi drink that I never heard of. Some told me it's like Pepsi Blue, but with some short of beer they never tired, others say that it has that drink Heineken mixed with the Pepsi favoring, or, flavoring. If you heard about Hyper Coke, then this is kind of like that. Once that Hyper Coke story popped up, the whole myth on this Pepsi drink sparked up again. What's this drink called, you may be asking? Pepsi Smack. Pepsi Smack, or as others called it in my local area, Bar Fight Pepsi, was Pepsi's move on aiming at a more adult drink than their own normal drink. They wanted to keep the Pepsi brand name on it because they wanted it to have a catchphrase, just smack it, since they love the idea of a beer Pepsi that you can just smack the can and whatnot. These were gonna be sold in the beer sections of stores, and then later its own vending machine. The Pepsi Smack vending machine was set to have four drinks on it. Those four being Pepsi Smack, Normal Pepsi, Crystal Pepsi, and lastly Diet Pepsi. These vending machine will only appear at malls, clubs and bars around some states. I also heard rumors that the company got in the likeness of Max Headroom to do the ads but he's not like the Coca-Cola version. This one was based off of the whole news hijacking one, with a gritty attitude, glitch a lot, and would mock other soda brands that's not Pepsi, or made by PepsiCo. Oh Chester Cheetah, how I adore you and your tasty Cheeto snacks. He would also be more weirder than the Coke version, having a taste of sex and only sex. The plan was running great, that is until they tested the drink to their taste testers. You see, this is where the whole myth happened, and it relates with the factory from my hometown. You see, again, my hometown wasn't the nicest around. Sure, you're gonna get the happy people, but you're gonna get the most abusive people you'll ever meet. The whole myth played out like this. Pepsi hired a group of 20 people to try out the new drink, and see how it tasted. This is only for that if the drink would be harmful, or bad, then they'll scrap the drink and would just restock on some of their other products. If it was good then the drink will get greenlit, and will start to spread around stores and whatnot. 19 out of 20 people tired it and loved it. The other guy said that it didn't set well with him, and said he can go home early. This drink is where you replace the whole idea of getting drunk to full on sugar high, or as the workers nicknamed it, on crack. Pepsi then greenlit Pepsi Smack for its test locations, which did well for the first few weeks. And then the first story hit. Headlines had this. Chaotic man snaps during party, almost killed local teens, all due to Pepsi Smack. Sounds like those clickbait videos, right? Ooh, it gets better. Then you'll start to see everyone acting weird around the area. Teachers would sneak in the drink into some of the schools, cops started to chug the drink while on the job, and the whole chaos just begun. The date was November 7, 1989. For our hometown, locals nicknamed the day, the day Pepsi smacked, and it all started at a local bar. The bar all got into a bar fight, both inside and outside. Heck, it gone so far that even weapons were on the loose in the place. Was that the smack of 89? This will later affect parents, loved ones and many more. One of them was with these girls, I think one of the girls name was Clover or something, ugh I heard she just got fired from that Nickelodeon hotel or something. Spongebob is not proud whatsoever. But anywho, these girls were having a party at this one girl's house. Their little brother was there as well, and all of a sudden, they raped the kid. I mean they just full on fucked the kid, all of them. 
Another was this one guy who works at some sound studio, and he started to kill most of his co-workers with the sound system they made, by popping their eardrums. I bet it must have been that Nigra scream sound effect he used. And lastly, the worst of them all. All of those locals who lived in the town? Yeah, they went on a purge. This lasted for the whole time, and it almost destroyed the whole town and once the drink ran out, they got even worse. First, you'll see people breaking stuff around the town, the next, you'll see people starting to kill each other with the stuff they have. I lost my uncle from this day, and it still scares me about this. But my family hasn't told me about how he died, so that's why I believe this whole myth. Anywho, after what people around the state saw around that town, the city sued PepsiCo on making the drink. Turns out the beer wasn't only just beer. They drop a tiny bit of acid in there too. That explains the whole chaos around the area. Luckily, the smack stopped there. Pepsi scrapped the whole idea for good, not even gonna mentioning it. I heard that they even brainwashed themselves just to forget about it, but I think some idiot wants to trick me on believing him for something, I don't know. If a company does this to us, and change us on who we are, then we'll know once the place turn into chaos. Just. Smack it, you know?